Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to start a new topic, mathematical statistics. Um, it's presented on website unizor.com. That's where I suggest you to watch this lecture from because there are very important notes for every lecture which is presented on this website. So it's basically a course. It's a course of advanced mathematics for teenagers, primarily high school. Um, and, well, this is just a, a new topic which I would like to uh, initiate. First of all, um, there is absolutely mandatory to study theory of probabilities as it is presented on this uh, website, newresort.com, before you attempt to listen to these lectures. Um, it's mandatory because, I mean, everything, whatever mathematical statistic does, it's based on theory of probabilities. And there is a very important connection between these two um, subjects. In some way, they are inverse to each other. Let's just think about it. What theory of probabilities actually tries to accomplish? Well, it deals with certain random variables. For instance, we have a random variable C. And we know everything about this random variable. We know its probabilistic characteristics. We know its distribution of probabilities, whatever you want to say about it. So, we know the behavior of this uh, variable. Now, based on this behavior, um, sorry, based on this knowledge, based on these characteristics and probability distributions, etc., we can actually say something about the values of this particular variable as experiments with this variable um, go through. So, for instance, if our random variable is the result of uh, rolling the dice, and we definitely know that the uh, probability of any number from 1 to 6 on a dice is equal to 1 6, then we can say with relative certainty that if we perform let's say 1,000 rolls of a dice, and we are interested in number one, well, we can say that approximately one-sixth of 1,000 times, which is what, like uh, 167 or something like this, we will probably get number one close to this number. Not exactly this number, but close to this number. And we can even evaluate how close we can say that with certain probability, like 95%, for instance, the number 1 will appear, let's say, from 150 to 180 times, or something like this. So, again, knowing the probability, theory of probabilities gives us tools to evaluate the results of the experiment. Now, the mathematical statistics is in somewhat inverse, as I said. We do know the results of the experiments in the past. And based on these results, based on the values which we have obtained, we can make some kind of a judgment about probabilistic characteristics of our random variable, which we do not know in advance. So again, theory of probability is, from the distribution of probabilities, we predict certain values which it can take within certain um, boundaries with certain probabilities. Mathematical statistics goes from data to the probabilistic distribution and probabilistic uh, characteristics of our random variable. So, in this way they are inverse to each other. What actually constitutes a complete theory is the following. Again, considering we do not know a priori in advance the characteristic of this variable, so what we do, we do certain number of experiments which result in certain judgment about characteristics, probabilistic characteristics of our variable. So this is the mathematical statistics. And then, based on this information which we have obtained about um, our random variable, we make a judgment about future results. So this is past, 
and this is future and this is zero of probabilities so that's a complete picture as I would like to present it to you so you will always have in mind what's the purpose of this and what's the purpose of that so again the mathematical statistics serves to define in certain well with certain precision to define the probabilistic qualities characteristics of a random variable based on certain data which we have obtained from the past experiment and then based on this we can predict the future so theory of probability predicts the future but the basis of this is the probability distribution which we if we don't have it we need to somehow obtain derive from the results and that's what the role of mathematical statistics actually is all right so this is some kind of a I don't know introduction to what exactly we will be dealing with now based on this now for instance we don't know that 1 6 is the probability of number 1 if we roll the dice what do we do well we roll the dice 1000 times right and let's say 160 times we have one what can we say based on these observations well we can say that approximately 160 over 1000 which is which is 0 0.16 is the probability of having number one we cannot make any judgment about any other unless we do know some results of any other like probability of number two probability of number three etc but that's what we can say so if our experiment shows that out from a thousand rows we have 160 times rolled number one then we can say okay well, the probability of um, uh, our random variable equal to one approximately is equal to 0 0.16 absolutely not exactly because experiment is definitely not completely conclusive but it gives us certain point of uh, judgment and then we can say that for the future maybe if we will make another 1000 experiments in the future we might expect the number of um, number of times when we have rolled one be more or less around number 160 that's a judgment for the future that's how statistics and theory of probabilities are working hand in hand starting from the data in the past to certain judgment about probabilistic characteristics and to predicting the data for the future all right next now why actually can we say that if we have out of a thousand times we have 160 times number one rolled then we can say that probability maybe is around 0 0.16 well this is all based on the law of large numbers so if you will go back to the theory of probabilities and um, uh, and uh, uh, study the, the law of large numbers you will understand that that might be uh, a good foundation for this so that's basically where we are um, that, that, that's the main apparatus the main foundation for the mathematical statistics um, which is uh, at the heart of it well obviously there is another very important uh, theorem the central um, uh, limit theorem and that will also be very important in our predictions in the future okay now let me um, say the following unfortunately many people are abusing mathematical statistics there are even some saying about this that there are lies some kind of other lies and there is a statistics well this abuse is basically nothing more than just you know using something in a completely unintended uh, way and uh, instead of approaching uh, with a good theoretical foundation we approach something in a completely untheoretical completely completely spontaneous and well let me tell you wrong way uh, example I mean 
for instance, uh, some agency would like to predict the results of uh, elections in the United States. Now, there are two major parties, Republicans and Democrats. So one agency um, polled 100 people and found that there are 60 goals for Republicans and 40 goals for Democrats. And that agency say, you know what? Based on my information, I predict that Republicans will win. Now, another agency, or maybe the same agency in some next day or something like this, also asked 100 people, and they had a slightly different picture. They have 40 Republicans and 60 for Democrats. And they say, okay, we predict that Democrats will win. Will win. Now, they cannot be both right. So somebody is wrong, which probably means that nobody is actually right. Both of these statements, like prediction of this win or that win, they're absolutely wrong. There cannot be a statement like that. What might be a statement is that with certain probability, the uh, Republicans or Democrats will win. And that is usually completely missed in many cases. Um, also, what's important is this number. Uh, this number is supposed to be significant, and we will talk about why. The greater this number, the more precise our uh, evaluation is. And there are many other factors which are participating in this thing. You will see that the best results can we get if we want to um, evaluate um, the random variable, which is basically uh, the experiment with which can be repeated again and again without any modifications. Now, in this case, 100 people, that's 100 different people which probably supposed to represent a much larger number, but how well it represents, nobody really knows. So, it's all very much um, unscientific. It's very much uh, basically kind of uh, analysis which maybe uh, pursues some political purposes, something like this. And it's far from being mathematically correct. What I would like to talk about is what is the theoretical foundation of mathematical statistics to avoid confuses like this. And let me start with one simple example. Let's consider you have one random variable And you have only one experiment of this random variable which gives the result x. Now, what can you say about this particular random variable? Quite frankly, nothing much. If you have only one result, probably the best you can say is that the mathematical expectation of x, uh, of c, is somewhere around x. So you're evaluating uh, you're evaluating the mathematical expectation of your random variable using one particular one particular result. Now, how good is this? Um, well, not very good, obviously. Can you improve it? And here is the very important uh, part of it. Excuse this noise. Somebody is just doing something. All right, so how can we improve the result of evaluation of the mathematical expectation of random variable uh, C with one and only one um, value x? Here is what we can do. Let's consider that we can repeat this experiment of basically um, checking the value of uh, random variable C n times. And we have values x1, x2, etc., xn, as a result of this. Now, the typical way people are um, approaching this problem is, okay, let's just have an average of these n uh, results of experiment, and that would be our evaluation of the mathematical expectation of C. Is it good or bad? Well, it's very easy to mathematically 
analyze. And here is how I would like to do it. Let's consider a new variable now C is our random variable so let's assume that we have n different random variables which are independent from each other again the word independent is, is assumed in the probabilistic um, uh, sense and uh, you have to really go back to the theory of probabilities if you forgot about this. So, independent variables which have exactly the same distribution as, as Xi. Now, what is this particular new random variable? Well, let's analyze it. Now, obviously, if I will take m equals to x1 plus etc. plus xn divided by n, where x are these num these results of the experiment of C, I will have a one single value of variable eta. Now, can I do exactly the same as before? If I have a single, um, single value for a variable, a random variable C, I'm saying that, okay, x is probably as much as we can do to evaluate the mathematical expectation of Xi. But let's talk about this, this in this particular way. Now, the mathematical expectation of eta is equal to, well, um, again, from theory of probabilities, you know that the factor can be uh, moved out of the uh, expectation, and expectation of sum is sum of expectations, right? So it would be expectation of C1 plus etc. plus expectation of Xn. Now, what is this? Now, we are saying that these variables are all the same, uh, uh, all have the same distribution as Xi, and which means they all have the same expectation as expectation of, uh, of Xi. So this is equal to 1n, and then I have expectation of Xi 1, 2, 3, 4 n times, right? which is expectation of Xi. So all I have proven right now is the expectation of this average is exactly the same as expectation of my initial random variable Xi, which is good, which means that this can serve as an expectation, uh, as an evaluation of expectation of eta, and since expectation of eta and expectation of, uh, and of C are the same, so this is also a good evaluation of expectation of C. Now, that's okay, but what about the quality of this expectation? Now, let's think about what is the quality of expectation of any random variable if you have only one particular value of this random variable. Now, random variable has certain distribution of probabilities. Now, these distribution of probabilities can be different and they might be um, arranged in such a way that our values are very, very close to the, uh, to, to, um, the mathematical expectation of the random variable. Now, it can be something like let's talk about, for instance, a normal uh, random variable which has a distribution something like this and this would be the mathematical expectation now you can have this type of a distribution now you also can have this type of distribution which means values are much further distributed with relatively large probabilities or you can have this type of a distribution where values are much narrower now, the measure of this um, um, span around the mathematical expectation is usually the variance, right? The smaller the variance, the closer values are to the mathematical expectation. And, therefore, if we can reduce the variance, that would improve the quality of our evaluation. Now, let's talk about variance now. 
we were talking about a random variable eta which is c1 plus etc plus c n divided by n what is its variance now variance of first of all factor can be moved out of the variance in square and again if you don't remember it go back to the theory of probability part of this course so it will be 1 over n square now variance of independent now the independence is very important variance of independent uh, uh, sum of independent random variables is sum of their variables right variances so I will have n variances variances of uh, each one of them which is the same as xi which is one nth of variance of C. So what happens with, with our result like this? What we have is, we have a variable eta, which has exactly the same um, mathematical expectation as xi, but its variance is n times smaller. And therefore, uh, standard deviation is one divided by square root of n smaller right so if my st uh, uh, standard deviation is smaller that means my single value evaluation and my single value evaluation of eta is x1 plus x2 plus etc plus xn divided by n that's my results of my experiment so my end results of the experiments I have basically converted into a single result of a different variable which is basically I'm just talking about the same the same thing in different ways so yes you can consider x1 etc xn as n different results of experiment of n experiments with one variable uh, xi or you can consider as one single experiment result of experiment with variable eta okay so basically what we have done we have significantly reduced the um, variance and standard deviation of our initial variable and therefore we can increase the quality of our evaluation of the uh, mathematical expectation of C with increasing number of experiments that's what's very important and that's what actually is all about in mathematical statistics um, it replaces the quality with quantity um, and in this particular case the result is that the quality is growing as the quantity is growing so the more experiments we have provided for this particular variable and the more uh, uh, the greater number n obviously is in this particular case therefore what we can say is that evaluation of our mathematical expectation uh, with this number is greater so that's the foundation for providing more and more experiments but however what's very important is that all these individual random variables should have exactly the same distribution as xi and they should all be completely independent from each other otherwise this mathematics would not work so if you can roll the dice in such a way that every roll is completely independent from another roll and you roll it and you roll exactly the same dice within exactly the same environment and nothing actually uh, affects your experiments like you don't really uh, change the table where you are rolling, you don't uh, shake it or whatever else. In this particular case, the greater number of experiments you are making, the more precision you can have in your evaluation of every result of every number of this, like mathematical expectation or some other probability, whatever you are analyzing. And in this case, it's anal analysis of mathematical expectation, but at the same time, we can analyze any characteristic of uh, random variable so that's basically everything which I wanted to say in this introductory lecture about mathematical statistics it's basically the purpose and the tools the purpose is as I was saying 
kind of an opposite to probability, to theory of probability. So not from probability to future data results, but from the past data results to probability. That's what mathematical statistics does. And the second thing is, what's very important is all these conditions, we have to provide as much data as possible. That's the quantity, that's this n. And the conditions of the experiment should be exactly the same. Then we can really approach this mathematically correct. If conditions are changed or something else is changing, then it's not working that well. And we will consider some experiments like climate change, cl climate change for instance, or whatever else. All right, so I do suggest you, if you didn't do it before, look seriously at theory of probabilities uh, if, uh, if you don't remember exactly this particular uh, part of the course. And then, obviously, we can go into theoretical and practical aspects of um, mathematical statistics. Well, thanks very much and good luck. <laughs>